everybody, and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can tell, the stock market continues to plummet, and I am chilling on the laid back couch. As a matter of fact, Mom, why don't you angle a little bit, because I cannot even get up. Um, you know, just want to say thank you so much for watching the show. We are doing value again today, but then I also picked one from our big sale. Mont, as a matter of fact, link up our sale. I don't know if all the maniacs know, we, we just had our biggest sale of the year. We have so much Bordeaux coming, so there's a lot of goodies on there, so check that out over the weekend. We're adding a bunch tomorrow, more items. I'm in the store tomorrow, Saturday, by the way, 11 to 5. So if you are a local East Coast maniac and you're not planning on doing anything tomorrow, 11 to 5 p.m., I'm going to be on the floor helping people, and I'm going to tape a live show up here at 3 p.m. in my office, and you're more than welcome to come up here and watch. So, as many people as can fit in this office, so try not to steal anything, because people say that that's what's gonna happen. Anyway, um, so we're going real bare bones today. We've got Yellowtail Chardonnay and Woodbridge Sauvignon Blanc. We are going, every store in America should have this wine style, and they are both six bones. Six bucks, ma. Can't get better than that. So we're gonna check those out, and then I figured, you know, in case they hurt my palate, and I'm just generalizing, that's not what I do, but in case I don't like them, I did want to finish off on a good note because you know what? No matter how soft the economy is, it's still about family and we should be pretty happy. There's always been worse times. Even if we have another Great Depression too, there's still been worse times. You know, dinosaurs were eating us when we were cavemen. So there's always worse times, Mott. And so I figured we end with a celebratory wine, a dessert wine from Hetzolo uh, from Tokai, that went from like 30 something dollars to 18 dollars on a sale and I was like okay this could be a lot of fun. We've loved their wines in the past. I've never had their three petunias which is one of the entry level wines. We'll get into that in a little bit but sports cards. We continue to open up uh, packs of cards. That's been a lot of fun segment and I just did something on GaryVaynerchuk.com about this. How you could turn this sports card opening into a show of your own passion doing your own video blog. So if you care about that stuff, Mott, link that up. You got the sale and now you got today's GaryVaynerchuk.com. Um, what do we got here? Mike Fountain, I don't remember him as a hockey player. Dennis Mulichek, I don't remember him. Greg Andersuk. Paulie Jax. Jeff Sargent. Uh, Jason Bozonor. Radic Bonk. I know him. Um, pretty cool. There we go. A little baseball now. Paul Wilson. Huge bust for your New York Mets. A little basketball here. Chanel Scott. Don't remember him. Damon Bailey. I remember him. Indiana. Wasn't he the guy that, like, you know, Bobby Knight, like, bit his head off? Um, Dwayne Morton, don't remember him. Jamie Watson, uh-uh. Charles Johnson, really good wide receiver. Um, remember him? He was the one who caught Cordell Stewart's Hail Mary pass, I think, Ma. Didn't we just have him on the show the other day? Charles Johnson, yes, uh, Charles Smith. D. Wayne Washington, a uh, little corner there, drive by Minnesota. Uh, Todd Stuzzi, I remember him. And Timmy Bowens, big fat Timmy Bowens. And there you have it. So! Vino. These four packs are crazy. Four sports. Got all weird. And they're all in college. And rookies. Anyway, four, uh, three wines um, on this Layback Friday. Uh, thanks so much for watching Wine Library TV. The numbers are, are just doing really great. Uh, we're going to have a refer a friend program that if you get somebody to watch for the first time, you're going to win like $40 million or something. But we'll let you know about that. You might as well just start referring a friend. Let's get into the first wine. Woodbridge. I should probably do. There will be no $40 million giveaway for referring a friend. Or laws apply in Texas. We're doing the best boys over <laughs> Exactly. Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi, 2007 Sauvignon Blanc, six US dollars. And uh, let's see what this little bright ray of sunshine's got to the table. Um, again, going with you know more value driven, under thirteen dollar theme. I know we're going with an eighteen dollar wine today, but you know I don't want to. I don't want to alienate the people that are dropping over thirteen bucks. But we will continue on the, the uh, value theme. Let's give it a snippy snip. Good citrus coming through, um, which is pretty exciting for Six Bones. Um, a little hint of a, definitely like tss, an aerosol freshener, like you did a poopy and now you want to make it smell nice in the bathroom because your wife's coming in. You know, tss, that kind of thing coming through on the nose. Tropical fruit, um, a little chalky, little, uh, no not chalky, smoggy. A little smoggy on the nose. A little Los Angeles up in here. Um, let's give it a whirl. Fair nose, nothing crazy. Good round crispness, you know, pretty bland, nothing too much going on. 
easy drink. Can't see on a Saturday watching BC, you know, versus NC State in college football. It bothering you while you're, uh, you know, eating a burger and having a little Sauvignon Blanc. Um, you know, probably comes down to being less than a beer, so you can't really get too, too, or a root beer. You can't get really too upset with the price point. I think it's kind of fair. Um, yeah, not bad. I mean, definitely not super exciting Sauvignon Blanc. Very basic Sauvignon Blanc-like flavors, but not atrocious with that all being said. Probably, you know, a, you know, a 79-point wine. You know, whatever that means, the point scale. You know, but... Um, not something I would go crazy over, but definitely, you know, having the girls over for bingo night and you don't want to spend a lot of money in this economy, it's not the worst thing I ever had. It's probably a little bit better than I thought going in, which is always great. Not hot, which is impressive because a lot of times these inexpensive wines get very alcoholic and this doesn't. I mean, boring as heck. But, you know, just like, you know, just like if you opened your high school yearbook right now and there'd be like seven people in there and you'd be like, who, what? You know. That's how this wine is. You're not gonna remember it, but it um, doesn't mean they weren't great people. Or great wine. It's not great wine, though. Okay, anyway, Yellowtail. Everybody knows this. One of the biggest selling wines in the world, Yellowtail, Chardonnay, $6.10. These guys sell a lot of it. I mean, people are showering in this wine. Let's give it a rinse. Let's see what's going on. I haven't had this since pretty much the release, so this is kind of exciting for me. Good golden color, gotta give them that. Give it a snippy sniff, like the glass says. Comes across very oaky on the nose, but not like the oak monster. Let me let me go back. I said oak, burnt oak, very burnt oak action going through. Somebody's starting a fire up in here, Mott. No, so must be the smell of this. I do get a little bit of like candied apple, which I don't hate, so that's a good thing. Um, smells like cheap Chardonnay. No doubt, like if I smell this in a blind tasting, I'd be like, cheap Chardonnay, KJ, Columbia Crest, Yellowtail, under $10. Cheap is not inexpensive, is the way to go there, politically correct. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Textbook, Kendall Jackson. And so where I'm going with this is, this has a little bit more residual sugar. And Jess Jackson, who created Kendall Jackson, killed it in the early 90s, late 80s, by giving his Chardonnay, um, and even further before that, but when it really started sticking in the late 80s, um, by giving a little hint of residual sugar that all the people in America really want and don't like to admit it. I think that's yellowtail secret in this. This is a little bit of higher residual sugar than the most inexpensive Chardonnays I've come across. And while I was tasting it, it just really was like rewind up in here. It was 1995, 1996. Um, and you know, and I had lines in my hair and listening to my boom box and I was drinking KJ Chard and I was like, uh-huh, that's what this tastes like. You know. Ace of Base and Black Hole Sun were rocking. And, um, and Biggie just came into my life where hip hop started taking over. So anyway, um, solid, not bad. You know, again, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't like it. It's not, you know, neither of these wines will be touching my lips ever again for a while until new vintages for the show. Um, just there's other alternatives for me. Um, but to me, this is like an 82 point wine, Mickey Schuler up in here. Um, solid, not bad. I mean, I, I you know, Will I tell you that I beg you to try other things that I think there's six and eight dollar wines from Portugal and you know from um, you know, It's starting to get less and less But there are some South African Chenin Blancs in this price point that I'd rather see you taste and you know There's still some Cote de Rhone's even with the dollar So there are other things that I think I'd rather see you taste in this price point, but um, I Don't think they're appalling. They're not the way I've had some one fifteen dollar wines that I've been more turned off by so Not awful. I mean, I mean there's only so much I can do my but but I definitely am impressed with the overall quality. I wouldn't say that it's the worst thing that I've ever come across. Um, before we get into the dessert wine and get a little bit more serious up in here, um, I want to give a big happy birthday shout out to Harry Rice Lake and Max Lesnick. It's fifth birthday, five, my favorite number. Happy birthday to you, Maxie. Five years old for Maxie, boy. And I want to give my official Jets Bengals prediction. Now, I've got two because there was going to be one all day and all week, but. Just moments ago, my favorite brother, A.J. Vaynerchuk, 
just called me. Mott saw my reaction. Tremendous happiness, just tremendous. I never root for injuries, and I'm very upset, and I, uh, I'm sad for Carson Palmer, but I do want the Jets to win. No Carson Palmer, so it's the Fitzgerald show, right? The Harvard kid, and uh, that's, uh, that's a good thing for my New York Jets. So where I was going to go 24-21 Bengals, I was thinking we were going to fall into a trap. They're the best 0-5 team of all time. They played the Giants tight as heck, Mott. You saw them. They, they did a nice job against the Cowboys last week. Um, I just had a really stinky bad feeling about the Bengals this week. Um, I thought we were going to get caught. I thought the Jets, you know, I'm thinking the Jets could win, but I, I really thought the Bengals could win too. Now I'm going different. I'm going 31-10 Jets based on that situation. Let's move on. The Hetzola, 2000. Three Petunias, Tokai, from Hungary, made from ferment and muscat and hasbula, uh, and the grapes that you will find common in Tokai, um, and Dessert Wine City, 18 bones. I'm dying to taste this um, because I'm a big fan of the producer. This is more or less their entry level into the petunias, the higher end stuff. So, very good price. Anytime you get Tokai for 18 bucks, you know, again, reduced. So, it's probably more of a 25, 28, 30 dollar wine. Comes across with a very interesting smell. Actually, quite difficult right off the bat. It smells like a lagoon and like a dirty frog. Smell this mud. I mean, it's really wild. And you like these dessert wines. Oh, I love, the, I love the Tokai. But the nose is really wild. Ooh. <laughs> See? You know, Dirty like, frog. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> but, you know, it smells a little like an auto body shop. Yeah. Um, smells a little bit like an old warehouse. You know, just kind of like unsettled. Like, we're, there aren't humans. That's what this smells like. Can you imagine them putting this on their shelf talker? Gary Vaynerchuk says, says, our nose smells like there aren't any humans around. It's opening up a little bit now. Ma, I want to show you something. You're going to learn something here. Come here. You don't need to make a camera. Get over here. I'm going to show you something about how interesting bouquet is and how interesting noses are. No joke, I've been whirling and twirling, swirling and whirling. I think you're going to be interested. It's not completely obvious, but if you smell a little bit. Yeah. Isn't it wild? Yes, it is. But seriously, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can get more of the apricots now. Yeah, now it's, it's opening up. It's wild, right? Yeah. In just that short of a time. And now you can see why I hate this show so much. I sit here and analyze these wines on a pop and pour. You know, we let them breathe and all that. And uh, um, all that. But you know what? It's still, people put in a lot of effort and time into these wines. Um, these winemakers and, you know, landowners and vineyard owners. And, you know, I just hope that, you know, I assess them to the best of my ability and really try to help you guys out and give you a navigation. But... Nothing should be taken for gospel. Not my word. Not Mott's for sure. That's for sure. Um, not Parker's or Spectator's or anybody. Stephen Tans or Jancis Robinson. Nobody. Your own palate. But anyway, very fascinating stuff. How quickly, I mean just quickly, it opens up. It, and, keeps, it keeps evolving. Yeah, and I, I'm telling you, Mott, you know, 15 minutes here of just more swirling. Mm -hmm. All apricots all the time. Very lemony, too. Is there? Let me, let me get into it. I know. Let's give it a whirl. I go back. Mm -hmm. Um, good call, Mott. I do get the acidity. I understand a little bit of citrus action. The way I'd like to explain this is take a bunch, I mean a boatload. Of, I'm going to give you one of my better, I'm going to give you one of the best descriptions I can ever give you because this feels so on point. Take a crap load of dried apricots. Put them on the ground. Take four lemons, squeeze them. Take two limes, squeeze them. Then take some butterscotch spray. I don't even know what that is. And spray it on top. Take the apricot, eat it. That's exactly what this wine tastes like. Wow, it sounded like George Costanza or something. Ah, right? Mmm. If you are not drinking dessert wine in your world, you're making a huge mistake. I'll be honest with you, I'm going to get the beard, Mr. Everett, in a minute. We're Justin downstairs. I want to get a cheese with this. I mean, you get a nice gooey, Cheese with this amazing dessert wine. What's really great, and Mom, I don't know if you taste this because you've been doing a lot more dessert wines. This is not as sticky. It's a little bit thinner. So for somebody that's not totally into dessert wines, this could be a great play because it's a little bit thinner, almost more like white wine as not, but there's more of a thinness. The viscosity is not over the top. That's what you get when you get in the four, five, six petunios. 
Asensia and things of that nature in Tokai. This is a lot thinner, but I think it's really working for it. Very good. A little short on the finish, which is not going to make me go crazy, but to me, where I thought this may be even a 92 or 93 pointer for a second there, it's probably a 90 pointer. I think it's a little short on the finish, but I think it's a 90 point dessert wine and 18 bucks for 500 ml, I think. Right? Yes, 500 ml, 12 and a half alcohol, 90 grams of residual sugar per liter. Very good stuff. Very interesting. Glassware bottle, different tastes. Amazing. Fascinating the wine world is. Like it a lot, going 90 points. And uh, when you guys come and see me tomorrow at the store, I will be handling handling. I will be handing this to some people tomorrow for sure because I like it. I think it's a great Thanksgiving play. If you have a, yeah, you know, like sweet mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes with the mushrooms, this is a great dish. Great Thanksgiving stuff. Anyway, awesome. Pretty, how about that, huh? You know, this is the kind of stuff you pick up in a pit stop. So, you know, pretty good stuff. Good show. Some values. If you could stay away from them and if you're willing to spend $10, there's so many other plays. But, if six is your limit, which it could be, these are definitely adequate and definitely worthwhile. And for a lot of the maniacs out there that don't get to taste the wines or put their palates against me, these should be wines you should be able to find very easily. Question of the day. What are you going to eat this weekend? I'm in a weird mood. I want to see what people are cooking. What are you cooking? What are you going to make? Leave a comment. I really enjoy them. You, with a little bit of me, are changing the wine world. Whether they like it or not, or do. See you later. Check out the GaryVinnerTrick.com. It's pretty funny.